Shalom, shalom. All oh, praise be to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim El Shah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Uh, of course, God, Halal, Yahweh Bashim El Shah. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And uh, through Spirit, Yahweh Bashim El Shah. I just want to put out um, like a repost of, you know, a response to uh, the video <clears throat> the apostle put out about, um, you know, vocab, vocab Malone talking about, you know, the Bantu people. Are not Israelites and stuff. So I'm like, hey, well, you know what? You you trying to pu push out all these lies? The people from the you know descendants of the Bantu people, they are Israelites. You know what I'm saying? And I was looking out some. I was looking at some things that went into the migration of uh the, you know the Bantu people. Like example right here. You know you can see it says um, it says right here Bantu migrations. It says you know, 1000 BC, the AD 11, <clears throat> 1100. It says, the Bantu people originally lived in West Africa about 3000 years ago. Speakers of the Bantu language began to migrate South and East, which me personally think is crazy because me personally, my origin is of, you know, the, the West Coast of Africa. That's where my origin is. And then my, as far as I could remember, my father and my mother always told me that you know what I'm saying? We were about a people pretty much part of the whole Bantu because Bantu is pretty much like the name given to all the different different tribes dispersed in the west coast of Africa. You know, after uh the besiege of Jerusalem, when the Israelites fled into West Africa, they were pretty much dispersed and divided in different tribes in different lands. But and this and it pretty much spoke a language Slightly different languages, but they all had the same source. That's why a lot of the, the dialect, like sometimes I would hear my father and my mother, especially my mother, because she's the one who speaks it. Like she she would speak the old ancient West African like dialect. And then it would have, I would sometimes, from time to time, hear certain words that just clearly sound, you know, like Hebrew, like straight up Hebrew. Like it would just be certain words, and I'm like, oh shit, like that word, that's a that's a Hebrew word right there. Like, this a that's that correlation. There's always been that correlation. That's how I really through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Shah, I was like able to, you know, the most I woke me up, and and it just matched everything that my mother had always always told me to what the scriptures had said. The scriptures were saying in front of me a match. You know, these people, you know, in the nation of Israel, you know, of the uh, tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. It says when you click next right here, as you can see the movement is talking about the migration because they didn't just settle in West Africa. You know, said the Bantu people also, you know, they continue to migrate. Why? Because it was a nation of people. So eventually they had to look for more space, more land. So you have Bantu people going all the way from in you know, Guinea, you know, all the way down to Togo, Benin, Ivory Coast, Cameroon. You know, saying Nigeria, Gabon, Congo River. It says the first wave of Bantu migration followed two paths into the rainforest around the Congo River. There, many of them lived in small villages and farmed along the riverbanks. So let's talk about the migration of the Bantu people, which are Israelites. You know, what I'm saying so-called Negroes. Now this was prior to the um this this is prior to slavery, prior to the slave trade. And this is, and when you could see the press, you see them going down. That's the migration. It said the dense rainforest did not provide much room for farming. Some Bantu groups moved toward the east coast of southern Africa, where the land this is like it, where the land was more open. And better suited for growing crops. Why? Right? Because as a nation of people, we knew how to grow crops. And we also knew to constantly move and, and, and when we would grow crops, the land Sabbath. Which, until this day, when I talk to my mother, you know what I'm saying? My father, they always tell me that in the ancient West African customs, they actually, like, when they have a whole land, like, they would cultivate, like, 50% of the land. And then when they get the harvest, they would, you know, just leave that particular 50% part, you know, open. And they would proceed to cultivate on the other part of the land to let, the, you know, to pretty much give that other side of the land rest. Now, they didn't call it the land Sabbath. Now we know, it, you know, that goes back to the law of the land, uh, the, the, uh, the law of what? 
the land Sabbath. But this is this is what they do. The Bantu people, this is what they do. Most of their customs. You talking about the custom of having multiple wives. The custom. This is one thing that really hit me that I knew through the spirit. Wow, you know what? We are those people. We are the Israelites. The Bantu people are Israelites. It's because the custom of if you have a wife, which is in scripture, if you if if your brother has a wife and and he dies without having children with his wife, you as his brother, you're supposed to your duty you have to take on his his wife as yours and have children with her so that he can come back through that seed, through your seed, your brother, so that his lineage will come back through your seed. This is an actual custom that goes all over, you know, West Africa and the Bantu people, which that custom goes back to the law, statutes, and commandments, which you, as an Israelite man, if your brother passes away without having a seed, you're supposed to take his woman as your wife and have children with him so that his line will not perish. You know what I'm saying? So for Volkab Malone, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Excuse my language. You talking about Bantu through the spirit, you know, I, I am one of those. What is he talking about? My family is, is, is part of the Bantu people. And they told me about the ancient customs, how it, it matches perfectly with the uh, uh, Levitical laws. So what the hell is he talking about? But like Apostle said, man, these guys just ran their mouth. You don't know what they're talking about. Now at the next stage, it says other groups of Bantu speakers migrated south into the dry, grassy west coast of southern Africa. The land was best suited for raising herds of livestock such as sheep, goats, and cattle. Which that's what we did in Israelites. Going back to, to David. You know what I'm saying? So again, this is this is truth. You know, so this is not made up. So, you know, when when Vokab Malone is, is asking is talking about what the Bantu people they have their own origins and how we should be just uh, uh, happy and proud to be Bantu. The word, the, the word Bantu, that was a word that was just put upon the nation of people that migrated it into a continent that wasn't theirs. It's a name that was put upon them. The Negroes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that migrated from the land of Israel into a continent that wasn't theirs. And they didn't have a place to settle. You know, they were a, a people of migration. But their, their origins went back to what? The land of Israel. That's where the Bantu people come from, the land of Israel. You know, through the spirit, man. Let me see. I want to bring this scripture. Uh, Isaiah. Because it speaks about that. But, you know, it's only for the elect, man. That's why the Heavenly Father had Israel be born out of the four winds. You know what I'm saying? So that the truth can be brought out. You know what I'm saying? So that people wouldn't just be out here running their mouth not knowing what the hell they're talking about. Because why they, just because they went to, to school and learned theology... And, and read some books about scholars, man. Listen, you talking about people that are from that place. So what the hell is you talking about, man? You know what I'm saying? You talking about people that are from West Africa. You talking about, you know what I'm saying, people that have the customs that match with, you know, the, the Levitical laws. You talking about people that have a language that's still, still similar somewhat of the old ancient Hebrew, you know, Lashawan Kudash. That's just the truth. You know, that's not wishful thinking. That's the truth. This is Isaiah chapter 11, uh, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt. Now, when it says Egypt right there, it's not just talking about the land of Egypt. Up here, it's talking about if Egypt really represents this whole continent because Egypt was the major power force, power source, or, or, or you could say major empire that ever come out of Africa. Really, we had different empires and different kings under, you know, Masa, you know, Masa Musa of Mali and different places like that. But Egypt, the old ancient Egypt of the pharaohs, is is what Africa is always known for. That's why, unfortunately, a lot of our people, Israelites, so-called Negroes, you know, um tend to like gravitate towards the ancient greatness of Egypt when Egypt was actually a place of um, a labor and, and and bondage and slavery for us you know Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans I'm reading again Isaiah 11 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall sit his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people from uh, from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathos, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. So again, that's, 
That's a prophecy, man. So the bond are the bond two people Israelites? Yes, they are. And again, this right here shows you bond two migration, you know, um, of the Israelites. So if you want to check it out, just write write that up. Bond, it's got bond two migrations, a thousand BC to AD eleven hundred. It shows you the migration step by step, and it pretty much breaks it down to you. You know, because Israel is not only in the west coast of Africa. Israel is pretty much all over the land at this point, this particular, uh, this particular point in time in history. So, but this pretty much, you know, hopefully, brothers, uh, you know, uh, edify. I know the elect are edified, man, and the rest are blinded. So, I'm, on that, I'm going to say, Kahalai, y'all, Bashim, I shot the bottom to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutation to all the sincere occupants across the four winds of Kasama God from a DC camp. Shalom.